All right, welcome. So we're going to be covering um, some more principles of accounting and financial reporting here for state and local governments specifically. All right, so um, that is going to be our focus. Uh, we're not necessarily going to cover a whole lot for the nonprofit side right now, but uh, we're going to continue to learn what funds are and how they're reported. And so this will help us also with in-class um, activities that we're going to be doing as well. So our learning objective one is to explain the nature of the three major categories of a state and local government, which are government activities, governmental activities, business type activities, and fiduciary activities. Okay, governmental activities for the most part is uh, considered, uh, well, we'll talk about that, it's later, but we'll, we'll move on here to our next learning objective. So explain the components of the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, so GASB, Integrated uh, Fund Reporting Model. Okay, so this includes elements and measure approaches, government-wide financials, fund financial statements, and the definition of a fund and the principles of fund accounting. So we're going to talk about a little bit more about what funds are and the different types of funds of each fund category. Okay, and some characteristics. So we'll get into that as well. Okay, so in the next learning objective, we're also going to discuss the nature of uh, major fund reporting and criteria used to determine uh, whether a fund should be reported as a major fund or non-major fund. So that's a de uh, distinguishment that will be made. Uh, some of these things may not actually be uh, covered in the textbook that you have. Um, some of the some of them are, uh, and so s these uh, slides that I have here are the the basic the, basically the same information um, with a, a few tweaks. Some of the tweaks are just to help us with our in class exercises for some of the more hands on stuff that we're going to be doing in class with the uh, Smithville uh, activity that we're going to be doing and just some more stuff that will help you when you do your term project hopefully. So um, as we go on though in the in the term we're going to be specifically breaking out some of these different funds and uh, the transactions in the funds and how we record and report those. Okay so uh, this so the basic financial uh, statements are split up into two. Uh, they're split up into two uh, major segments. So one of those, of course, is the government-wide. I think we talked about this last time, so in the last video. But just to reiterate, and then we're going to go into more detail. And then the fund financial statements. Okay. Um, so the, the main elements of our financial statements as we go get into this are uh, the assets and th these are defined a little differently uh, as opposed to just um, our um, uh, our principles of accounting right we talk mainly about the for-profit business in that and so as we care, compare the for-profit and the not-for-profit or the governmental entities uh, these simple definitions are going to change just a little bit on how the government looks at their assets, for example, is the first one here, right? So our assets on the government side are going to be, so th these are resources with present service capacity that the government uh, present, presently controls. Okay, so that's a little bit different than our um, not-for-profit for definition. Okay, then we, then we have this, uh, this other definition down here, a deferred outflow of resources, which is consumption of net assets by the government that applies to future reporting period. So deferred outflow. So this is, this is where we're going to meet, be meeting some of that um, accrual basis stuff. So deferring is a, definitely a accrual basis. Okay, so liabilities um, are going to be, so our present obligations, right, to sacrifice resources that the government has no or little discretion to avoid. Okay, so present obligation. So this is, again, kind of short-term when we look at some of these things, governmental 
we're looking within the fiscal year. Um, also, uh, there, there are a deferred inflow of resources. Okay, so this is uh, connected here with the assets. The liabilities are connected with our deferred inflow, right? Deferred inflow would be considered connected to the liabilities, which is the acquisition of net assets by the government that applies to future reporting period. Okay, so net position, we did we wrote out the uh, equation before, right? So that was assets minus liabilities equals net position. Okay, so that one deals with this. So net position is the residual when assets plus deferred outflows and liabilities minus deferred inflows is calculated. So these are these all go together here. In that, so uh, so our full equation here would be our assets minus deferred outflows. Okay. Minus our liabilities. Minus our deferred inflows okay and that is going to equal net position so that is the new upgraded um, that's our new upgraded and and here we're gonna have this decreases right in here there we go we got to make sure to to do that Okay, so an inflow of resources is the acquisition of uh, net assets by the government in the current reporting period, right? So, so that's current, right? The outflow of resources is the consumption of net assets by the government in the current rec recorded period. So this is what we call um, expenditures. Okay, these are revenues. So, so we're we're breaking out. Remember, we've got our two sides. So we've got the government-wide financial statements, and we've got the fund the financial statements, right? So this is we're going to talk a little bit more about the fund or the government-wide financial statements. Again, the the measurement focus here is going to be on economic economic resources and the change in those resources, okay? Inflow and outflow. And then the basis of accounting is accrual-based, okay? And our accountability, really what we're going for here is we, we, this is operational accountability that we're dealing with, not fiscal accountability so much, right? This is, this is we're looking at the government as like a business. That's why it's operational accountability. Okay, so the, here are two two um, financial statements that we're going to be dealing with. Statement of net position reports year in financial position most comparable to, and we talked about this before, a balance sheet. Okay, so this is the balance sheet for the government. Statement of net position. Okay, and it, which makes sense when you look at the equation on how it comes out, right? It's all going to equal net position. And it's going to increase it or decrease it. Okay. The statement of activities. This reports expenses and revenues classified. So it's going to be split up, right, by program or function. Uses separate columns for uh, different government at governmental activities of business type and component units. So a component unit is something that, um, like, for example, um, we may consider uh, it, it's like a consolidation, right? So if you have all of these, like if you have a large uh, city, right, and you really operate the, like let's say for example, the airport as a separate entity almost, right? But at the same time, the uh, the airport really uh, answers back through and is has all the monies flowing through the city 
and really this this the airport uh, governing body really answers to the city uh, um, to the city council right all that stuff it becomes what's called a component unit so you have to consolidate all of the units under the umbrella of the entity right so that's kind of what a component unit is there and so uh, so the, the other thing that we're talking about here is um, we're looking at the fund financial statements right so we just looked at government-wide uh, financial statements now we're looking at the fund financial statements so we're looking at uh, our governmental funds okay so these are three different main types of funds right okay so governmental proprietary and fiduciary okay so the governmental funds really is the fiscal accountability right not operational and we're, we're current we're worried about current financial resources this is modified accrual so this one's special right this is really where the modified accrual happens okay all with our current okay that's where really where the modified comes in is we're tracking current uh, we're not doing accrual based accounting we're doing modified and then the operational accountability is still met in the proprietary funds and the fiduciary funds okay so we are tracking and we're using accrual basis on this on these accounts fund financial statements again so this is these are the reporting uh, this is broke down for the reporting okay government for, governmental we got a balance sheet and statement of revenues and expenditures right so this is like our income statement kind of in a way we don't have any income it's really just uh, just really our fund balance that is the bottom line here right our fund balance either goes up or down uh, and, and then the, on the proprietary fund side we've got a statement of net position which is the balance sheet right statement of revenues expenses and changes in fund uh, in net position which is kind of like our income statement right okay and then of course our cash flows so uh, then uh, the fiduciary funds we've got a fiduciary statement of fiduciary net position which is kind of like the balance sheet again and then our changes uh, which is our it's kind of like our income statement uh, and no cash flow on the fiduciary side okay Okay, so this is this is kind of an important thing to to realize, right? So we got these two sides happening, government wide and and our uh, funds. Okay, so they're two sides of the same world, right? Two different views, and so because they're reported, uh, the government wide's reported using a cruel basis. Okay, and we're using the modified accrual for our government funds part of our financial statements so the, the trick is we have to we have to reconcile those uh, to the we have to reconcile those they must be reconciled to the um, to present in the government wide financial statement so there has to be a reconciliation that's done And we'll, we'll go through how to do that and how the reconciliation happened as we go. Okay, so fund reporting. Uh, and so, and really the, the, tr the uh, problem that we're trying to fix here uh, is we're trying to be able to report our revenues and our expenditures for a government entity that and track it uh, so to, to meet our legal and contractual uh, obligations, basically our mission, right? Whatever the, whatever the city mission is, hopefully, you know, that's really, we're looking for accountability. So we need to report on the funds to, to make uh, everybody accountable for what's happening and aware. So this is the definition of a fund. So the fund is a separate fiscal entity, right? 
means it has its own resources. It has its own liabilities. It has its own operating activity. Okay, so really what we do is it has its own, uh, what we, in the end, it has its own fund balance. So it's really operated as a separate entity. A separate fiscal entity is a fund. So right here, fiscal entity. And thus, because it's a separate entity, it has its own financial statements. So we are actually to create, able to create financial statements for each fund with its own fund balance. Okay? Okay, so here's a bunch of different types of fund categories that are laid out here. Right? So general fund here. And let's let's go. Okay, so these these are in um these these are part of the governmental funds, right? So these are modified, these are based on the modified accrual. Uh, modified accrual. I spelled that wrong, but yeah, modified accrual. Okay, so that's what that's what the governmental funds are based on. Uh, the main and usually the largest, a lot of and a lot of times the most important fund that has all the budgetary stuff that is tricky is going to be your general fund. But then we have each of these uh, other funds that come into play as well. Okay, so uh, our special revenue fund uh, comes into play when we collect fees or when we have special revenues or gifts, right, that need to then be turned around and used. So the incoming money, here comes the money in here. Okay. We get the money and uh, it has to be used for a specific uh, purpose, right? It doesn't go into the general fund pot for general purposes. It's kept into the special revenue funds. And okay. that's when there's incoming money there. Okay, so our debt service fund is uh, specifically set up to uh, track um, the payment of our liabilities, right? So this one here is set up to track uh, our payments for our liabilities, okay? Okay, so our projects funds like capital projects and other things, this is special project funds, right? And so things can be set up and these are these are typically uh, like they have a short life. So typically these funds are set up for the life of the project. Okay. Uh, a lot of times the permanent funds are set up as, and, and these are these are made up of restricted monies or or donations. Okay. Donations. There we go. Okay. So the, so these are all different kinds of funds, right? And so when you uh, when you set up a government entity, you may have uh, funds, um, certain, all these funds, or you may have just some of them, 
right? So if you don't have any restricted donations uh, or endowments, and is another word for maybe like a permanent fund, an endowment, then uh, you won't need to have that type of fund necessarily set up. You don't need them all. Some may, sometimes you may. You set them up as you need them. Okay, so here's the proprietary funds, right? So these are like the, these are the business, right? Kind of like the business activities. So these are kind of the business activities. Internal service funds. This is going to be like your IT department. This is also going to be maybe like printing. Those kind of things. Uh, funds or different uh, services that are provided internally within the organization for other departments and funds. Tracked separately. Um, our enterprise funds are uh, also known as auxiliary funds. Okay. These are going to uh, be set up uh, in for as a business, right? Within uh, the the governmental governmental setup, uh, some of these things could be like, for example, like for a university, it's going to be their bookstore. Okay. And so, and that those are it's okay for the. Uh, maybe within the prison system, I know that they have like, for example, like a sign shop, right? Something like that. So they make things for people. Um, so it, it, uh, typically the enterprise funds aren't going to be the sole purpose for the governmental entity to exist. But they may still meet the needs and fulfill some of the mission uh, associated with the governmental institution. Okay, so here's here's our fiduciary uh, fiduciary funds. Okay, so the main idea with the fiduciary funds are these are pass through monies for the most part. Okay, these this is not these are all monies that the uh, government entity or the governing body over the government entity, like a city council or the board of education stuff like that. These are funds that they really don't have any ability to say, okay, we're going to spend these monies this way. That they are just a pass through. They have to take them and hand them right off. Okay. So trust funds typically the nature, the difference in the nature of these two trust funds. This is usually uh, where uh, you either. Uh, keep the money for a while so there's there's actually uh, accumulation happening here accumulation for a purpose right and the agency funds a lot of times these are uh, connected uh, one example are the club funds on campus at the college okay the club have their separate balances And uh, it's for a kind of a separate purpose. So like a, um, there's also, um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of the main idea with the, with the agency fund. Um, and they're really just on these, it's really just, uh, oops, spelled that wrong, uh, custodial, right? They're just keeping track of it. Um, not, it's not even necessarily the government entity's money. Clubs do their own fundraiser, for example, right? All right. So, the, so here are here are different kinds of balances, right? And it all depends on the nature of the of the money within the fund. Each fund will have its own, you know, the overall fund balance, right? And But it may be made out of several things, 
right? Depending on what type of fund it is and where the monies came from and what really are the liabilities going forward for uh, the entity. So some may be non-spendable money or funds, okay? Some may be restricted in other ways. Maybe you can spend them for only, but only for certain things. Uh, sometimes funds are committed, right? So within your accounting cycle, you may uh, have some money um, that, but you also may already have a liability that you're that you are have committed those funds to, right? So that's kind of the nature of it. They're not necessarily restricted by donor or by who you got the money from, but they're restricted kind of by your own actions. You've already committed those uh, assets over, right? Um, and then our assigned and unassigned really is dealing with the in uh, the intentions to use okay and a lot of a lot of times these are um, set up in so this these two are all about intention. And what is what is the intention to use funds called? Well, for the for for the most part, it's it's going to be your budget, right? Oops. Mm, kick me out here. Let's get back in. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be your intention here, and it's going to be the the intention set by the budget. All right, so um, I'm, I'm just at, about out of time. I better hurry up and finish this up. And uh, we'll talk about some of these things in more detail maybe when we're doing our project in class. Uh, so the, the, major, the major fund uh, versus um, a non-major fund, right? So really, really the idea is um, the size of the asset, right? Okay, and and sometimes it it's associated with uh, ten percent. There's a rule with uh, if they um, if it meets the ten percent rule, it has to be ten percent of corresponding uh, element total assets, liabilities, and so forth. So everything within the fund, if it's ten percent of the fund, then that could be considered a major fund um, that's reported. So the major fund, the, the, the mo important things with the major fund, when you're doing your fund financial statements and all those things, each fund has to have its own separate um, column when you're reporting a lot of the fund statements. Um, and it has to have its own uh, financial statements uh, made. Okay. So, and here's kind of the 10% rule you can read through that, but this is kind of the nitty gritty. We're not necessarily going to cover this in class, okay? Major fund and non-major fund. It just depends on how it's reported in the CAFR. So looking forward, what we're going to do in class is we're going to talk about uh, budgetary accounting, okay? So we're going to, we're going to do that uh, here next week, and we're going to set up in our in class a dual track system to uh, lay out our, not only our budget, but then our actual expenditures, right? So we're going to have a budget to actual setup in our system to be able to run some reports off. All right, hopefully this uh, will help. Um, and I will put the, uh, and go ahead and take the quiz and uh, and put in uh, the letters that I'll put here on the last slide. All right, so here are the codes as well. So you can put this code into uh, the uh, quiz when you take it. So this one was at the end. So hopefully everybody watched the video and and got the um, and was able to get this code. 
Um, sometimes I'll mix them throughout the lecture. Sometimes I will put them at the end. So uh, take a look and uh, we will see you in class. Have a good day. Bye.